Good morning, uh, kia ora to you all. Uh, welcome to uh, talk about cool here in Shed 6. And um, we look forward to uh, a very good discussion this morning, the first of, of the conference, as a matter of fact. Um, before I, I introduce uh, our panel, I've got to inform you of a couple of things that I have to by law. Okay. I'd like to uh, tell you that in the event of an emergency, we'd like you to follow the instructions of the Wellington Venue Safety Wardens. You'll see them, they'll be wearing the high-vis vests. And uh, exits are well marked, but please take a moment, if you would, to familiarise yourself with the exit nearest to you, because if we are required to evacuate the venue, then the assembly point is Frank Kitts Park. This is out front, as, uh, as you know. In the event of an earthquake, please follow the procedure of drop, cover, and hold. That'll be interesting. Please do not evacuate unless otherwise instructed to do so by the venue safety wardens. And if you require first aid or in the case of a medical emergency, let one of the venue or event management team know and they'll be able to assist you. Um, just a final housekeeping note. The bathrooms are located near the entrance foyer just to, through the doors that you came in with. So, welcome. Let's have ourselves a great day and I'd like to introduce you to the panel members for the welcome to Show Me Wellington. We have... Uh, David Perks, General Manager at uh, RIDA. Give him a round of applause because that kind of makes people feel good. <laughs> Warwick Dent, Events and Partnerships, General Manager at RIDA. <laughs> Leonie Ashford, Business Events, Bid Manager, Tourism, New Zealand. Leonie. <laughs> Excellent. And I'd like to uh, hand you over to our facilitator, Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome Aaron Alexander. Aaron. Morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, feeling a little bit like Alan DeGeneres at the moment. <laughs> and after Frankie, probably sounding a bit like Alan DeGeneres, so I'll try and <clears throat> keep the voice low. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> morning, guys. Thanks for being here, everyone. Um, uh, Perhaps if we just uh, take a moment to go down the, down the line and just uh, uh, introduce a little bit about your area and, and your organisation. I'll just check I'm on. Right, great. Hi, I'm Leonie Ashford and I'm the International Bid Manager with Tourism New Zealand. Our job is pretty basic. We bid for international conferences, which means that we bring more international business to um, New Zealand and specifically to Wellington. So just very briefly, I'd like to um, thank you for having me here today. And I'd like to say that we work as, uh, we see ourselves working as the international bid arm for Business Events Wellington and along with Positively Wellington Venues. So we work very closely with Claire Martin, with Siobhan um, and Jessica's team. And Jo Darby's nodding away up there because she knows that we work very closely with her team as well. And this is all led by... Um, Jean Hendry, who manages the project for Wellington. Um, I'm Warwick Dent. I'm the general manager of uh, events and partnerships at the at RIDA. Um, when RIDA was formed, we decided to bring together um, all our event attraction um, portfolio under one. So I, uh, I oversee major events, business events, and performance events, uh, along with stakeholder management and partnership. Um, so obviously, as, as the only said, uh, our business events team works very closely with international bids with Tourism New Zealand, but also working on a national level um, with associations and with, with our partners here in Wellington to attract events to Wellington um, and make sure that we provide that, that advice to make sure your event in Wellington is a great one. Thanks, Warwick. Um, I'm David Perks. I um, am, um, I've got a long title, I'm General Manager um, venues and project development and I'm also acting general manager destination and marketing for Wellington Regional Economic Development Agency um, so uh, I guess where Warwick looks after looks for the business coming into the city from a both a business and a performance events perspective um, my team with um, Joe as we've already mentioned um, Adam who's our head of operations and, and Helen who looks after the performance side we look after the stuff that comes into the venues and um, and we look after the, the most of the large venues in the city, which is Shed 6, TSB, Bank Arena, 
um, Michael Fowler Center, St. James Theatre, Opera House, and uh, we also um, work for the um, the, uh, the galleries next door to here. Um, and um, I suppose that project development part of what, what I do is, is also working with the city, looking at other developments in the venue space. So as I'm sure you're all aware, there's lots of live conversations at the moment about convention centers, about what happens to the town hall, um, and even what happens to the basin reserve and things like that. So that's quite exciting. And then on the marketing side, um, we drive Wellington's image to the rest of the world through digital PR and um, various marketing activities. Um, and, and I guess, you know, I'm just going to start by saying that I think one of the most exciting things that's happened in the last three months is a new statistic that came out that said that Wellington's got to 21% of the um, multi-day convention market in New Zealand. And that, that's really exciting for me, um, having been around in this space for a number of years now. We've been sitting between 14 and 17 for a long, long time, and, and to actually see us build up over over 20% of the New Zealand market is, is really cool, and I think it's a testament to the great work that um, uh, um, our, our various teams do, both the, the uh, venues team and the business events Wellington team, but also the great work that the industry is doing, all working together to get to a great result for our businesses uh, and for Wellington as a whole. Thanks, guys. Um, Leonie, I think we'll come to you first. Uh, you spoke about uh, Tourism New Zealand working in partnership to attract business events. I wonder if you could speak a little bit more in detail just about how Tourism New Zealand goes about targeting and attracting business events. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, well, it's quite simple, really, and it doesn't involve a lot of research. And the way we do that, we, we are members of um, an international association which identifies and I'll just talk about association conferences first of all, which identifies um, association conferences which rotate globally. So a number of those might um, only go to Europe or we're seeing a growing trend where there's a lot that will rotate through the Asia Pacific area, so that's us. So our database um, that we access probably has around 50 odd thousand conferences in, but they're not all going to come here. A lot of the American conferences only stay in the US. So we narrow it down by looking at those conferences that will rotate into New Zealand. Then we'll look at the, um, the frequency and were they last here and when were they last here or if they've ever been here. And another important factor that we would consider is um, have they been to Australia recently? Because you'll find that global conferences, international conferences, um, if they've been into Australia probably in the last two years or if they're looking to visit Australia in the next two years or so, they won't be considering New Zealand. So we narrow down our search. Once we identify the conference, and I say we, um, I really mean Jean Hendry and <laughs> not me. So she, she's very focused on specifically for Wellington. This is where we work with the team. So we'll find the conferences and then the, the winning aspect of what we do is we find the right person here in New Zealand who's going to literally put up their hand to bid to host that conference here in Wellington or here in New Zealand. Now, it's that person, it's their expertise, it's their passion for what they do in the international association space. And look, there's, there's an international association for just about everything. So what they do and the passion for what they do, the passion for New Zealand, the passion for their city, and in many ways um, it may be for their university, is what actually often wins the bid for us. So it, the process is find the conference, um, find the right person, and submit our international bid. And I must say that um, we're getting better all the time at what we do. And right now, we're probably, we've been doing this for about five or six years. And in some occasions, we're having um, a second go at it. The first time round, we put our hand up and said, we'd love to host this. And with that, in the international space, um, once people realise that we do have hotels, that we do have international airports, and we've got capable venues, um, second time round, we've been the winners. So did that help? Thanks, Lucy. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Um, Warwick, I'll come to you. Um, you mentioned that the Business Events Wellington team is uh, uh, part of your uh, area within Reader. Um, could you speak a little bit about how that team 
it functions and functions within the wider uh, reader organisation. I, I think if I, if I begin with the sort of the, the broader of how Business Events Wellington fits into reader, mm. obviously as a as and, and under D David's team in destination marketing, um, the visitor economy and, and an attraction of visitors to Wellington and, and continues to be an important part of readers' function, um, which was the old PWT, and business events obviously is a very important part of that of driving that business into Wellington. Um, both most probably most importantly in the shoulder season or off season from from tourist peaks, um, and working with our with our various partners, our venue partners and our hotel partners to make sure that they really achieve. Um, what they're trying to achieve. I mean, if we look at some of our hotel occupancies in Wellington at the moment, they're running very high. Um, that's obviously creating creating um, demand for, for more product and then more hotel development here in Wellington. And a big part of that is driving business events through those hotels and, and venues. So that's that's sort of broadly how um, business events team fits into, into Reader. I guess the other thing that bringing those organisations together, bringing um, our old tourism function and our business growth function together, it allows us to actually use the business events attraction team to support broader sort of sector growth plans we have. And I think that's something that we're really looking forward to doing in the future in particular, is how we can use business events to support the, the work that our business growth team does in sector development. Um, you know, for example, screen tech is a, is a big industry here in Wellington. How can we work with the industry to bring those relevant, um, both international and national business events to Wellington to help support that? Um, more specifically, and a lot of people in the room would have worked with the team, um, say Claire Shippawan and Rebecca, they work really closely with our partners, whether it's on international bids with Tourism New Zealand or whether it's with our local partners. Um, and it's about bringing business events to Wellington. Um, we are agnostic as to where they go into. Um, we, we are about bringing the, bringing the events here um, and then working with our partners, whether that's venues, to Papa, our hotel partners, then working with them to see what's the best fit. Um, so we've, we've talked a bit about international bids. I think in international um, associations are really important for that space. Um, something we've identified recently is national associations are really important to keep attracting that national business as well. So the international conferences are really good, but we need that consistent business, and especially with some of our partners with smaller venues, that national business is really important. Um, so we're here to offer advice. Um, we're here to help with national bids, international bids. Um, we can do site visits. Um, basically making sure if you want to hold your business event in Wellington that we put you in touch with the right people, we offer the right advice, and that we make sure that you have the best event you can while you're here in Wellington. Fantastic. Um, so for, um, for all of you, I think, uh, and everyone in the room will know that there's a number of major convention centre projects across the country um, uh, in the pipeline or proposed. Um, I was wondering, actually, Leone, if you could speak a little bit to, um, to how, there's a logic, there's a logic to this. If you speak a little bit to how um, these projects might change the game for New Zealand in terms of business events on the global stage, and then we'll come to you, David, for a, a bit of an update on, on where things are sitting with the, the Wellington Convention Centre project. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem at all. Um, just, uh, I guess that we would refer to them as the family of convention centres that are um, being built here in New Zealand, and um, you can talk to the specifics of Wellington. <laughs> I'll just mention that obviously in Auckland, um, they have started um, building the New Zealand International Convention Centre, and I must say that um, out on the global stage, I'm very proud of that, because at long last, we have a, um, a reasonable-sized convention centre in comparison to um, a lot of convention centres around the world. It's still not huge. Um, there's the capacity for a conference of around 4,000 people, 2,850 in the auditorium there. So that's, a, that's a, a pretty good size and great exhibition space. And the exhibition space is the um, aspect that we often forget about when we're talking about delegate numbers and simply focusing on the number of people coming through. Um, the other project, of course, the, is the Christchurch Convention Centre, both of um, which is a work in progress, and I can't say any more than that. It's um, pro we're looking at around 1,400 people for that particular con convention centre. They do tell me it's still on track, so both of those um, convention centres will be on for 219, and I have no comment at all on the Queenstown one because I just don't know. Uh, and I'm not sure that anybody really does there. But what's what it's going to happen? What's going to happen with this is if we, when we, 
we will bring in large conventions to these facilities and also into Wellington. And the effect um, in terms of the pre and post touring, which obviously Tourism New Zealand are very interested in, and we have a lot of resources to support that. Um, so people will come. New Zealand is definitely that bucket list destination, which means that they will come and they will bring their partners and families um, and effectively they stay longer and spend more. So there's all of those effects around having more delegates in a country and spreading, spreading it out. But there's also, um, with a large convention, there will be satellite meetings. And we've actually benefited quite well from our friends across the ditch in Sydney and Melbourne who have large conferences. We've picked up quite a few satellites from them and we're very happy with a conference of 500 people, which is a satellite to a large conference. So <laughs> the, we, we will be picking them up around New Zealand simply by hosting those larger conventions um, in our convention centres. So there's all of that about the number of people in, the num more, more conferences, we'll get the big one, we'll get a number of satellites, we'll get um, pre and post, and there's the, um, the knowledge transfer. And, we spend a lot of time, our team, um, working with people in universities, and I cannot stress enough the benefits they see um, to the university. So it's a partnership, so it's all about the university rankings, and we can help them with their rankings by hosting those international conferences in New Zealand. It's got their um, logo all over it. You know, it might be um, Otago University, but it'll be here in Wellington. So it's all about the university. It's all about raising their rankings, raising their profile, raising their funding, and that works for both the university and the individuals. So they're very keen to bring more of the la certainly the large conferences to the various convention centres. So did that help? Fantastic. Yeah. Then uh, David, where, where's the Wellington one? Right. <laughs> so um, it, it does feel like it's been a long journey, eh? Yeah, everyone's nodding. Um, um, so w where are we at right now? Um, as you know, um, the project that we're working on is now a, uh, a movie museum um, under Sir Peter Jackson's um, creative um, directorship and a convention centre. And um, I, I suppose the... The exciting thing about that is that w what we will deliver when it happens will be a something quite unique in terms of experience. Um, you've kind of, I'm sure, seen the designs on the front page of the um, the Dominion um, for the exterior. Um, I suspect the the exterior is going to be quite dull compared to the interior once Jackson's got his hands on it, which is really exciting. Um, but of course, along with that become comes the complication of a, a building that is. Um, not just for one purpose. If we were building a co just a convention center on that site, just across the road from Te Papa, um, the money was signed off to do that uh, two, possibly more years ago. I'm just trying to think, and um, and it would be up by now, and we'd have had a you know a a box style convention center, which would have done some tricks, but probably not um, broken any new ground. So the compli the complications we had along the way are getting that. Um, the balance right between what the movie museum needs and what the convention center needs. And I, I think now we're at a point where both parties believe that the needs of both are served. And that means that we didn't want a convention space that looked like it was in um, the goblins' caverns of Middle Earth because when the IRD or somebody turned up to the conference, it might not have been quite the right look. But we still wanted to leverage um, that opportunity with having the movie museum on the same side offered. Uh, and equally, of course, the movie museum didn't want their museum to look like the home of IRD. So you, you understand that it getting the right balance has been a, a tricky program. But uh, I firmly do believe now that both parties are agreed that we've got to the right point. Um, and I think what we'll see over the next few months is uh, well, you won't see it, but there will be a lot of work on the detail of legal agreements and financial agreements. Um, but I think now we've got the concept together, um, it will, it w we're on the road. A and I'd be hoping that um, probably, you know, a realistic time scale would be early 2021 for an opening here in Wellington. Um, 
and I think uh, I just kind of move on from that a little bit and say um, we're really determined from a convention center sp perspective that the space in the convention center doesn't end up being a compromise. I think you know one of the challenges we've had over uh, a lot of years is that we've been using a variety of large buildings in Wellington for um, for different purposes that each of them feels somewhat compromised. And you know, we think of the space here. This works great as a, um, a convention space, of course, with the, the arena and, and Shed 6, but it is also where we put World of Wearable Arts on, and that takes it out for um, 10 weeks of the year. It's also um, a basketball court and a netball court, so we fit into their seasons as well. Um, and then we look at St. James, of course, we have the theatre on, um, but then we want to sell it for conferences as well. So having a dedicated convention space in Wellington that's built to purpose is, is very firmly fixed in my mind as to what we're trying to achieve. Thanks. And Warwick, maybe um, from your perspective, uh, with a broader view, what, what will this convention centre, this facility, this dual purpose facility mean for Wellington? I, I think following on from David's comments about it being purpose built and, and what it does, um, obviously it will attract more business events to Wellington um, and we believe that will then um, obviously create demand in our visitor economy and we believe that this piece of infrastructure will lead to other infrastructure projects and um, I touched on it before but specifically hotels. Um, we, we are probably short of hotels, the hotels in the room probably tell me we're not but um, we, we believe that the, you know, if we're going to create demand um, in Wellington the convention centre is a real key infrastructure project for that. Um, and Again, following on from David, what it does do is actually frees up our other venues to be more used for the purpose they were built for. So whilst they've served us very well as business event spaces, um, they are a compromise um, and they do get, it not only compromises the business events um, industry here in Wellington, but it also has compromised the performance events um, and artistic events that uh, those b buildings were actually originally built for. So we believe you know, having a, a purpose-built convention centre will obviously um, take care of most of the demand for our business events, not to say that other venues wouldn't be more appropriate in the, in the right times, but it then opens up some real opportunities to actually really think about what we use the St. James for, um, what we use the Opera House for, what we use this building for, um, and other developments that might go with it. I think also, I, I touched on it before, that the connection with the movie museum does provide that unique link that Wellington has. Um, the film industry is a, a very important one to us here in Wellington. Um, and whilst we will have a convention centre, the additional pulling power of, of Miramar and what that movie museum um, will do, it's very important to what we do. So as far as attracting those events that fit again with our sector growth plans. Um, and one thing we, we haven't touched on, but for the city as a whole, um, the convention centre, its placement um, across the road from Tapapa, I, I think we'll see a, over time that part of town become more and more prominent as a as an entertainment area. We've already got Cuba Street and Courtney Place down there. We're seeing more hotels move to that end of town. And I think what it'll do is it'll create a real precinct around that area, which will be very valuable for the city. Fantastic. Um, I've got one more question for uh, all of you before we uh, open it up to the floor. Um, and it's probably the hard hitting question or the, the rubber meets the road question. Um, <laughs> just briefly, what what, what's in the pipeline from in your areas and what, what's planned to grow the business events industry in, in Wellington specifically? What's, what's, what's coming in the next few years? What, what do you got planned? How are you uh, planning to uh, help these guys make more money? I guess I'm just going to talk briefly about the, um, the, the town hall. Um, we're working with Wellington City Council, with Victoria University and with the New Zealand School of Music um, to create um, a new New Zealand School of Music that would be based in the Wellington Town Hall. I think that's really exciting. Um, it means that that fantastic facility which has been closed will be open again and be strengthened so that it's a safe place to be. Um, it means that the amazing acoustics in there will be appreciated um, from a performance perspective, but it will also, when it's reopened, give us the opportunity to use it together with our other venues, this, this place and the new convention center, um, and give different experiences to um, delegates coming to business events in Wellington.
<laughs> it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I could um, I could talk forever about the specific bids that we have um, worked together and won that are coming to Wellington. Um, just our, our general work in progress. You know, I think we've looked at we've won four bids and. Um, one of them, at least one of them, is in 2022, um, and others are sort of 216 to 18. And I just mentioned that the timing for the convention centre works actually very, very well for us in the international business event space because um, we are bidding for 2024. Um, we're even looking at 225 for some of our bids. Now that's how long, out, that's how far out we actually look to bid. So. Timing-wise, is working well for us. Um, the location and that, you know, the theming that's associated with that also works very well for us because that's the attraction. Um, you wouldn't believe how many people talk to me, and they really just want to talk about um, Peter Jackson. They really just want to talk about the movies. It's either that or the All Blacks. So, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, you've got a huge advantage there. And obviously, um, I'll just mention the work that we do in Australia as well. I, I do focus very much on the broader international, but we work very closely with you in Australia, and that's Helen and Helen Bambury and Sam Kent. So they um, are responsible for bringing in quite a few um, specifically site visits. The lead time on those is less than our international conferences, but um, the, the timing for your convention centre the, the location and everything you're putting around that works well, and um, obviously some of the flight opportunities across the across the ditch are working well for us too. Fantastic, Warwick. Um, might um, we're short on time, so I would like to give these guys an opportunity to ask a question. <laughs> but uh, Warwick and the BW team are here um, all day, so you have the opportunity to uh, ask them directly. But um, uh, if no one has any questions, we'll come back to you, Warwick. But does anyone have any uh, uh, questions um, for the panel? Well, that sounds like you've done a good job. Go for it. Go for your life. I think um, just obviously we are starting to put plans together about how we fill our convention centre. But I think as Leonie touched on later, it's actually also for us planning how we leverage the developments in Auckland and Christchurch. Um, there are real opportunities for the country, um, and. In as Leonie said, I think that's something that we really need to start looking on, of actually start looking about what is coming in through Auckland, what is going to come in through Christchurch, and how we can leverage off that and host those smaller boutique events in Wellington. Um, I think for us, continuing to work with, with the international bids with Leonie's team, um, the Singapore Airlines connection with Canberra has opened up a lot of opportunities for us, and I think that's a real focus for us over the next 12 months to make sure we're fully taking advantage of that. Um, and on a national basis, um, Siobhan is, is really looking over the next six to 12 months to really look with national associations more. Um, a lot of them are based in Wellington. Um, so really making, making sure that we are we're front and centre with them and driving their business through, through Wellington. Fantastic. Um, well, thanks very much, everyone. Um, I know we've all got a, a busy programme of activities today, so thanks for taking the time to come and join us. Um, these guys will be around um, for a few minutes if you wanted to have a chat. Um, but otherwise, thank you and uh, have a good day.